Hello and welcome to a new episode of Infugenic Renaissance. Do you want to know how US is controlling the narrative around psychedelics and narcotics in the world? And how Russia is totally against it and wants to continue war on drugs? Well, if you listen to this episode till the end, probably you'll learn something about it. Because there's a lot of happening in the world. Actually, in the United Nations, there's been a committee on narcotics and on drugs. And it was an annual convention, it was like 67th if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, they've been discussing drugs, the legal substances, the precursors, the ingredients that are being used to create drugs and other variations of the, I don't know, type of fentanyls and opioids and whatnot. So, of course, psychedelics are considered drugs in the majority of cases, and they are. But, you know, drugs are not only psychedelics, uh, some of them are helpful for you, some of them are harmful for you. Say, I don't know, Tylenol or some paracetamol or some other drugs that you buy in the store or in the pharmacy, that can help you good. But those are the same drugs that can kill you pretty much. So, of course, there's this nature of the pharmacon, and uh, that's how it works. But let's not go there for... <laughs> yeah, let's just take a step back. So first of all, as you may have noticed, I, got, I have a different background. Currently I'm recording in a hotel in a New Delhi, it's India. Uh, great area is called Greater Kailashtu. Very nice area, a lot of really wealthy people live here. And you can see that the economy is booming because each time I visit New Delhi, I notice more and more that are appearing more premium cars you know like mercedes's bmws and whatnot but anyway uh weather has finally got better and uh, the smog has gone and uh, yeah you can see that the country is developing quite rapidly surprisingly enough they have a goal to become 100 percent electric vehicles by 2030 and this is really astonishing because it can actually happen because next door outside of the hotel there's a swap station for motorbikes which basically are run on electronic device which are basically electronic or electric vehicles so you can just replace the accumulator and just continue further on with your bike without polluting mother earth with your co2 but of course there are batteries that you need to deal with but let's not dig into that topic i wanted to talk to you about you and about the narcotics and about the drugs and the legal substances so <laughs> let's roll so why have i decided to talk about is that there's been a tectonic shift oh yeah by the way some mild injury from a bike accident in sri lanka nothing serious or nothing biggie but yeah some losses of uh, skin surface uh, that are not critical for my health luckily but yeah anyway be careful whenever you're driving and riding a bike those tuk-tuks are incredibly dangerous and better you know control your speed uh, anyway going back to un and the, the narcotics and everything that is happening so recently there's been a committee that uh, lasted for the duration of five days and the countries united and you know discuss like what are we gonna do about drugs is the war that uh, was supposed to be on drugs that started roughly 50 years ago it's pointless it's not working it's just you know creating even more victims creating even more harm and creating even more suffering because the problem with drugs never disappear really i mean if you look at the situation in uh, usa for instance if i remember correctly one hundred five thousand people a year die from overdose okay and those are not psychedelics you cannot die of an overdose from psychedelic i mean at least not from psilocybin mushrooms that for sure and uh, lsd but at least don't do that don't don't even try to attempt such stupid shit okay yeah, don't experiment with uh, attempts to kill yourself. You want to kill yourself, ask for help, first of all. 
and then you know uh, deal with your current situation and then think twice before doing that but anyway going back to the narcotics and the discussion so the problem with the war on drugs is that it never really helped i mean the problem is still there um not only the united states but other countries are facing the same pretty much issues that people are consuming opioids or methamphetamines like crack or meth or however you call it and they die they eventually kill themselves by just you know slowly degrading or overdosing and the heroin is pretty addictive and can lead to an overdose but the, again the problem with the war on drugs is that once the substance is prohibited peculiar minds or i know uh, entrepreneurial minds of the underground, the people who basically provide all those drugs in the first place, they just come up with a new variation, with a new molecule that is more toxic, that is more harmful, that is more destroying your body and uh, more addictive. And uh, I mean, they make money out of it, out of it, right? They understand the risks, and uh, of course, everything that's been happening for the duration of past dozens of years showing that current policy is not effective because the situation is even worsening even more people are getting in jail for nothing and you know especially when we're talking about the other substances like marijuana because people put them all on the same in the same bucket and put that people in jail uh it's just it's so stupid and especially with the recent developments that germany legalized weed Finally, yay Germany, this is the second out of G7 countries, first is Canada, to legalize marijuana, Mary Jane, cannabis and good old weed. And this is a step towards progress, because first of all, Germany is for the biggest economy in the world, and of course the leader of EU pretty much, but secondly it is a step towards a different direction, which is called harm reduction. Yeah, you heard me right, harm reduction. And this is a concept that is not widely spread, that is being discussed in the United Nations. And believe it or not, so the new approach to a changed course was brought by United States of America, the same country that waged war on drugs when uh, Nixon was in power. And if you remember from my previous episodes, I gave you a proof that it was driven by just racism and hatred they had nothing to do with the harm of the psychedelic substances but anyway so it's the same country that started the prohibition and the war on drugs in the first place but now they are turning the tide because they see that the problem is there and they can do nothing about it so i guess it is time for a change and finally fucking finally somebody recognized that so let me talk a bit about harm reduction so the concept of harm reduction is not that straightforward and you can think of it as if a measure is to trying to reduce harm to save more lives and alleviate human suffering by decreasing the amount of number of people being incarcerated and put in jails for minor offense like owning a substance that is illegal and is and it's on schedule one list and in, in the country in which a person is located. So first of all there are 60 countries that decriminalize drugs so you know there are countries where it's not illegal to possess a drug which is totally fine there are other things that are happening around the world that uh, so-called uh, drug use rooms or something like that so basically if you are addict or if you have let's put it differently if you have an addiction to opioids and uh, you cannot do anything about it you're not in the best place probably you're not watching this uh, youtube episode but anyway a person can go to a specifically dedicated room for consumption where they will give you a clean needle and you can inject yourself and you know just enjoy the trip i guess uh, but uh, it will be safer if you do it with somebody because you exchange needles it can lead to hiv and other diseases and basically eventually you can die so the principle of harm reduction is more humanistic by nature 
But surprisingly enough, at the United Nations, whenever this uh, document was designed and brought by the United States for further discussion, countries couldn't agree on the concept of harm reduction, and believe it or not, they wanted to take out this word. They argued for several hours, some countries were like totally against it. Um, surprise, surprise, China. Hmm, strangely enough, China is the biggest supplier of opioids. I don't know why they were against it. But anyway, Russia was also against it and they wanted to denounce the entire treaty because US came up with it. But, you know, those Russian officials, they're fucking crazy. I mean, I just don't get it. The entire world is heading towards progress and Russia's like, nah, fuck it. I just, ah, no, I, we, nah, we don't need it. I mean, let's just go back to the old days. You know, it was fine. I don't I mean, they, those people, they just drive me nuts. But I've been to Vipassana, so I try to keep the equanimity of my mind and observe reality as it is. But anyway, so the harm reduction. It was almost taken out from document, but it fucking stayed there. So this week, actually, the week of uh, the 20th of March, and uh, I probably will post this slightly later. But anyway, it was a historical moment. And this is really by far the biggest thing that happened since like 50 years ago, when the war on drugs just got initiated. So what happened is that a concept of harm reduction appeared in the official documents of the UN. Woohoo! Fucking A, finally. What the fuck does that mean, right? So what does it mean? It means that the harm reduction itself um, is still quite a big concept and it can be, you know, per be perceived and understood in, by different people differently. But anyway, the idea there is to um, put human rights at the very core of all the initiatives and all the attempts to minimize the consumption of drugs or minimize the harm caused by the consumption of drugs to people and minimize the human suffering. However, all those words were not included and of course, you know, the, the representatives of different countries were arguing like what the fuck is harm reduction and what it should be like. Anyway, historical moment is that there's been a tectonic shift pretty much. It hasn't happened yet, but there's been a crack in the war on drugs, which means that in the course of the upcoming years, UN will change direction towards regulating illegal substances. And the, the document has been approved, outweighed by 38 votes. Two countries were against the set, China and Russia, I don't really understand why, but China, uh, I guess they had their own reasons, uh, but Russia was blaming US and, you know, playing some fucking politics there. But anyway, I mean, it got passed, so it doesn't matter. So, what it actually means? The document itself is not like... Um, an imperative. It's not like each and every country need to do something right away and change their legislation. It's not gonna work like that. What it says is that basically it is a memorandum, it's a recommendation, so to speak. It is a, like a advice to each and every member of the United Nations to treat their individuals in line with the latest scientific evidence, uh, say with the latest scientific evidence proving the effectiveness of various types of methods. So, in a nutshell, what it says is that, look, there is science and there are ways to decrease harm caused by the consumption and ownership of the illegal substances. Let us all use best practices, science evidence-based knowledge tools, methods, and just, you know, work towards uh, improving the quality of human lives and uh, decrease the violation of human rights in the first place because just somebody is consuming illegal substances. So, of course, it doesn't mean that everybody's gonna change their policies right away, but US is 
As usual, writing the tide and uh, controlling the worldwide narrative, it was their initiative and they made it possible to pass it through. But, you know, luckily or unluckily, unluckily because it's a big problem, luckily is that they finally decided to do it, uh, they were the authors of that memorandum originally. Okay. So, before I wrap up, a couple of things that I wanted to mention, and uh, first and foremost, I probably said about this before but Australia has been the first country on the planet who legalized psychedelic assisted therapy a year ago and yeah well almost a year ago but anyway uh, you can get a MDMA or psilocybin assisted psychotherapy as a prescription from your psychiatrist to treat uh, depression PTSD and other mental illnesses I guess like anxiety and substance use disorder or something like that but it is not widely known. I don't know why people typically talk about United States, people typically talk about Canada, maybe UK and other locations. EU is trying to catch up, but not yet there. There are initiatives that are trying to bring the attention of Euro Parliament to psychedelic assisted therapy and the potential to treat mental illnesses but it's getting not that much traction yet because still it's a stigmatized topic and of course people don't yet accept it widely so the reason i wanted to talk about australia is that i was in the business lounge when i left uh, sri lanka before my flight waiting for it and there was a really nice elderly couple from australia they looked like 70 years old or something and i congratulated them on the fact that you know they are the first country in the world to adopt psychedelic assisted therapy to my surprise they were very positive about it why surprise is that because typically when you talk with people of that age they are quite skeptical they're quite stigmatized and they're you know quite ignorant in the majority of cases about the potential the therapeutic potential of the infusions However, they said that it should be available worldwide, which is fantastic, and I totally agree with them. However, they mentioned one other aspect, is that they said that uh, it is their surprise that it is quite uncommon for Australia to do something like that. And this is really interesting because I've looked at the recent data about the acceptance of marijuana and psychedelics in the society and the trend the trend has been changing over the course of the past few years i tried to reach out to some professionals from australia to try and explain why that happened well people say different versions like pollen effect of course michael pollen with his book netflix effect with the help changes uh, your mind um, again by uh, Poland's book, uh, the documentary, if you haven't seen, please do, it's a really good one. And there are other things that are happening, like mental illnesses crisis and the COVID that exacerbated the crisis in the first place. So the need, the urgency emerged and, you know, people started to consider other options that are possible, you know, to implement and uh, change and alleviate human suffering. Okay, let me wrap up here. So, first and foremost, one critical idea that I wanted to convey is that there is a crack in the war on drugs, which is fucking fantastic, because war on drugs showed that it is completely ineffective, it doesn't work, it doesn't alleviate human suffering, it is just causing it. The new concept emerges is harm reduction, this is what I'm doing, I'm informing you on educating people about the concepts of harm reduction and the safety about the use of psychedelic or euthanogenic substances how i prefer to call them and the therapeutic potential of their use in the clinical trials or yeah in the, in the clinical context let's put it this way so US was the country that uh, initiated war on drugs in the first place and again uh, 50 years later they are the ones recognizing that it's time to change the diet which is beautiful. So please 
share information don't forget to like share subscribe we need to continue the un policy of harm reduction we need to inform people we need to tell them that you know psychedelics are not that bad they can help they can treat depression ptsd anxiety substance use disorder and other other stuff uh, like physical pains as well there's been a recent study about uh, psilocybin mushrooms uh, targeting specific cytokines that are causing inflammation in the body and for people like myself who suffer from rare diseases like rheumatoid arthritis it's uh, one in hundred thousand uh, cases it can re literally help and i know because i consumed psilocybin mushrooms and uh, i know that uh, i'm experiencing less inflammation and less pain in my joints and i'm off my medicine which i've been consuming for what was it like eight years or so uh, but yeah so there's evidence there's knowledge there's data and uh, it shows that it works but don't forget about the safety measures and of course remember that it is your own responsibility to take care after your, your own psyche thank you very much for watching don't forget to like share subscribe spread the knowledge and until next time next time it's gonna be a bit fence here behind my back i bought a lot of books a shitload of books and probably you're gonna see them in my back uh yeah i don't know how to bring them all the way back to me. Wait, yeah, i mean i got a suitcase i'm actually recording this it is on top of my suitcase and half of my suitcase is filled with books from the local bookstore and the reason i did this uh, I did that <laughs> is that um good prices in india for books are like extremely I mean, if you compare with US or Amazon or, you know, other locations. Anyway, uh, long story short, um, a lot of knowledge that I'm about to inquire and uh, a lot of money that I spend in my self-education. Thank you very much for watching and until next time. And don't forget to put your comments in the comment section, all right? See you. Stay safe.